I got started turning finials when a lady asked me at a show if I could turn some curtain rod finials on the ends of the curtain rod. And I, I said, yeah, yeah, I could do that, you know. So I went home and I penciled in something and uh, went to work on it. And it worked out good, but I kind of enjoyed it. So what I'm going to do today is, is turn a finial, and uh, I got some examples here. But, but the thing that I want to, I'm going to do along the way is, it doesn't make any difference what spindle you're turning. Everything I'm going to do with this little finial translates to any spindle that you're going to turn. Okay? And one of the things that I'm going to employ is the story stick. Has anybody used the story stick before? It's the suit. Huh? Yeah. Um, the way you need to start with any spindle and perhaps any wood turning, uh, you know, is you got to start with a drawing. And in the case of a, sp a spindle, um, you should start with a drawing on graph paper. And. Uh, this is, I don't know if you can see all this from there, but this is full size. Right here. Uh, this drawing was made, who got years ago. And I, I turned this spindle yesterday from this drawing. Now it's a little different, and you'll see it later. But what I've done here is I, I've sketched out what I wanted and across the top here I have indicated the width at this point right here this is a quarter inch wide this little cut here is a sixteenth this one is a half inch this one is a sixteenth the distance from here to here is an inch and three quarter the distance between the top and that little rib is a quarter of an inch. And then there's three-eighths of an inch between here and here, and then the distance from here to the tip is an inch, is three and three-eighths. So this is the width, of the, 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 the width of the piece in total, not half, but in total. And then across the bottom here, I've got the length delineated. A quarter inch is sixteenth. Seven sixteenths is sixteenth. And uh, the whole thing overall is seven and an eighth. And, and uh, this is an uh, inch and three quarter. This, this width here is uh, an inch and a quarter. They said it was three and something, but it's an inch and a quarter. And then this is. Uh, Three, three and three eighths. So the height and the length are delineated here, because what we're going to do is instead of taking a pair of calipers, you know, if you're going to do spindle turning, you need calipers. There's another one. And instead of taking calipers and Going like this, you only got a half width because of this drawing. I'm going to take a story stick and transfer these measurements to a story stick, and then I can transfer them to this piece here. Uh, and it's done simple. Um, with any spindle, you want to start with the major diameter, which is the widest diameter, and then go down from there. So the first thing I need to do is to get this, I think it's long enough. Yeah, we're going to have to foreshorten this one a little bit. <laughs> um, this is a piece of that birch that Steve, or beach that Steve gave us. The 
first thing we have to do is get this down to the major diameter. And the major diameter is uh, two and a quarter. So I'm going to set my calipers for two and a quarter. foot rule at home. I couldn't find it. You want to go half of that, don't you? Huh? Yeah. You want to go That's two and a quarter. Yeah. I have a one foot rule, plastic rule at home. It works a lot better than a tape. The other thing that we're going to get into how I finish these. And the other thing I do is these little test tube pots, you know, and th th these are made out of pallet wood, uh, just two pieces glued together, okay, um, well, all of these are made out of pallet wood, um, and I finish all of these with the same finish, and that's, we're going to get to an antique white finish, so that it looks old, it really looks like an antique. Ah, uh, party tool. Alright. Uh, let's get her around first. This line right here, uh, which uh, is, if I have a stick here, any stick will do. I'm going to make a mark where the base is. Hold that stick up on the 
on the drawing and I'm going to make a mark right there. So, whoops, I can't do it that way. Um, I'm going to have to make the base right at the end there. So now, this is my story stick. I can hold the base right where it's supposed to be, and I can make that mark, and that mark defines that point right there. Um, another thing I can do is um, I can define this this is the next diameter down, the next widest point. We've defined this diameter, so now I can define this diameter in this part of the, of the piece. And that is an inch and three quarter. So we'll shorten up a little bit here. Inch and three quarter. The other thing, well, I don't need to find where it is right now. Um, let me define it again here. Move all the wood down to that point. Again, we do that 
with the storage stick. I'm going to get my sleeve caught. Normally I work a little different. But... I know the number for 911. <laughs> my phone's in my pocket here, too. So. Tell me later. <laughs> Right there is the widest part of that thing, which is the diameter we've already defined. So, I want to... Define this this uh, diameter first, and then I'm going to define this one and this one because they're the same. This one here is uh, inch and a quarter. You never get your lot. Hmm? You never get your hair. Uh, I never got my hair caught. No.
are these two this little ridge here and this little ridge here which is there and there and those are seven eighths I usually work with three pairs of calipers a lot of times I think I got another pair here seven eighths now I know that the first one <laughs> This right here, the base, is supposed to be a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go in. Skip a half. Again, we'll go to our story stick. This is one parting cut here and one parting cut here. there I didn't really bring the tool I need to do that I need to get rid of some wood here in order to get this in properly I want to make that indentation but I can't get in tight enough and since this is going to be a small diameter I can easily remove some wood there Because this is shorter, and I'll point out the difference here now. When I drew this up, and this is important, 
when I drew this up, I really didn't leave myself enough room to make this, this very, very small, small little, little curve in here. here. Uh, because when I didn't have the tool to do it, you can see it's bigger here. Um, so I have modified it, and I should modify the drawing. Because we're foreshortening this anyway, I've got to mod modify it some more. So, I'm still going to do something like that, but... see let me take some wood away here and we'll see what we got Once again, I can't get in tight because I'm using a gouge, so I can use my fingernail. You notice that's not completely flat, and it's flat right now, so I'm going to make that, well, i got to get that little whoopie do in there. So I can actually, there's my little groove right there. That this is this line here is the top. But it's not flat, but it has to be flatter than that. Again with my fingernail. what I got left to get that whoop de doo in there. And that isn't much room, but let me see what I can do. Just using the screw as a scrape. If I had a small little round nose scraper, I could get that, but I don't. And I, you know, I just I got to do something else here. Let me think. What we need to do? Yeah, that kind of does it. Put my little groove in here. sandpaper
This is 120. Now, this beach is going to be painted. So it could be maple, could be any white wood. No reason why you can't make these out of walnut, cherry, exotic wood. This happens to be, would have to be made out of a 2x2 two two blank. But you can buy 2x2 two two blanks by 18 inches. Uh, if you want to scale these down and go to inch and a half wide, that they're even more readily available and cheaper. You get a lot more species than an inch and a half by inch and a half. <coughs> take that sharp edge off there a little bit. Okay, let's assume I've gone to 220 and I've done all the sand. I can do. Now I still have to get the end down here. I'm just using my hand to support it. off here but um, I gotta paint this yet and so I'll just leave that easy part them off after a pan. Now last night part them after what Gary? I'll part them off after I pan them. Oh, paint it and then uh, last night I uh, took one of these pieces ooh, and I painted it uh, with bin. Uh, on kills, whatever. You can see this pine, a uh, piece of that pallet wood joined together. Uh, it's pretty crude. I mean, it's torn out here and everything else. Because this is going to be painted, you could fill this with Bondo if you want. You're not going to see it because it's going to be painted. Uh, but because this is an antique finish, I uh, you know, I, if this had wormholes in it and everything else, I think it does have one here. It's fine. This is going to be an antique finish. And uh, we're going to hopefully find a way of doing that. See, I've taken the base off of this piece. I, I told you I left the base on. All those pieces have the base left on. I don't know why I painted the one about the base, but I did. We'll just make a little spigot for this to go on. Yeah, and 
case these pots, you 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 got to leave the base on and drill these out with a three. I guess it's three quarter inch drill. That's good enough. The reason I put it back on here is because I want to sand this. Now, I don't care if it's sand through. Whatever. Where it's going to sand through is at the wider diameter. See it sanded through here, here, not all the way around. Probably, just in some place. That's, that's great. I've exposed some of the wood. It's still got the white. I really should have put two coats of paint on this, but I didn't. So that that's that's fine. Now I got some. Now you can do this with any. I'm using white paint and walnut stick to get an antique finish. Um, this is that skew that you used to open paint cans. Oh. <laughs> what did that skew was for? <laughs> Told you that there was. <coughs> I didn't have the whole thing full of tools like I got. <laughs> not much stain in here, but there's not. Make sure, make sure you get everything covered, those uh, tear up areas and everything else, you want this stain in there, you don't want them to be white. Um, you can let that sit on there as long as you want. but. You're going to wipe most of it off. Now, I, I should have gone with two, two coats of paint last night. Basically. That's the finish. That's kind of how I did that vessel last week or last month. I dyed it and then I sanded it and then I went over it again with darker. What kind of paint did you put under the white? Then you could use any paint you want, and if you want, you can put a coat of clear lacquer on there. Uh, you don't have to. I got a better example of that finish, and I'll bring it up here in a minute. Uh, because what I want to point out to you now is that because you're painting. If you're going to be using a natural finish out of walnut or oak or something like that, you really want it out of one piece of wood like, that, like so. But if you're going to paint it, the beauty of this is you can join two, three, four, five pieces of wood together in lamination to, uh, to get whatever you want. And yeah example of a little bit bigger here but you get the idea of the finish 
No, there's a couple things that go in here. Let me get them. <laughs> this, uh, this piece is a chess piece. It's the bishop. Okay. Years ago, I have a friend in Sheboygan who used to be in cabinet business, wood design. And he came to me one day and said, uh, can you make a chess set? Said, yeah. He says, uh, the queen and the king have to be four feet tall. I said, what? He said, you got it. He says, I'm doing a cabinet job for a guy over in Bay Harbor. And uh, he wants to build a formal garden and his house. And he wants to have a chess set uh, on two foot square patio blocks set into a manicured lawn. And when I say manicured lawn, it turned out to be a, a golf course green. Uh, I mean, and these patio blocks were set in flush with the grass and then you mowed it with a green mower. Beautiful. And <coughs> I made him a chess set. And this was the bishop. This was the original prototype that I took over to him and with my designs of the queen and the king, I had a good friend of mine in town, uh, Keith Young, who was one of the best chainsaw carvers I've ever seen. He did the, the four nights. I made the base and supplied the wood, but he did a beautiful job making the four nights. I couldn't do <coughs> this on the lake. Everything else I could, the castles and bishops and the king and the queen and 16 two-foot pawns. Um, this was one finish. The other finish was red oxide, sanded with black paint wash. So it was basically black, the red oxide, because it's a prime absorbed. See, that bin will absorb more paint. It'll get more off color. You can see this is not white, you know. But let's, let's, uh, dissect this piece. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. And it was all made out of, uh, this piece has 32 board feet of wood. In it. There's two two by 10, eight feet, and one two by 12, three feet. Uh, this is the 2 by 12 I mean this is the 2 by 12 the rest of it was all made out of 2 by 10 you can see the lamination is separating here a little bit it's an antique but you, you know who cares this is quite old I've had made this quite a few years ago um, this is there's a lamination here there's a lamination here there's three layers there there's two or three here three or four in here, one, two, three, four in here, and at least two in here, and then this is the lamination this way, okay? Now the way I made those, uh, I really don't have any clamps around the house, so I simply cut them to the squares that I needed, put the glue on them, and drywall screwed the corners. And then when they were set up, uh, I danced out the rounds, so you, you advance out, out of all of the all of the screws, except for this piece here. This is a lamination of four pieces this way. So what I had to do there was the two inside laminations, because I had to remove the screws on this piece. I can't, I, w I couldn't cut around. I just drywall screwed from the edges in to clamp like so. And when those two were set up, I took the screws out and then I could face screw 
two more laminations onto that and then remove those screws and I, and I had the blank to, to do the top here. The leaves are made out of uh, oak veneer. Uh, the stem is a, a skewer. The pointed end is up here. The backing is paper around the stick that's with contact cement on it and it sticks to the, you know, contact the back side of the, the uh, and it's finished the same way as the pieces with the antique finish. What you use for that? Spruce? And, uh, Gary? Huh? Is that spruce? Oh, uh, you know, I think there's a little spruce, probably a little pine in there. I can't remember. It just, uh, it just. I think the two by two twelve by is fine. Is I think the rest of it was spruce. Two by, two by ten. Came out of lumber yard, huh? Well, the chest set. Uh, who, uh, as I recall, there was like seventeen hundred dollars worth of material in that chest set. It was a big pile of lumber. It took me uh, all summer to do it. Uh, I mean, I don't work on a continuous, but uh, I think I had like 160 hours, and it was over $10,000, which is, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I have since made, well, I made the chest set, I've made, I took this, every show I went to, I took this, and I put a pedestal on the ground, right in front of the booth, and put this on top. And I, I probably sold another half a dozen of them. Sets? Whole sets? Or just, no, just that. Just single that. Yeah, this is $465. And I probably sold another six of these. So, uh, spindle's been very, 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 very good to, to me, you know. <laughs> uh, it's not your, the type Your point is you made it just like you did the low one. Exactly. Did you know. you turn it after it was all glued together? No, Your no. I turned piece. each peach, and it was a production. Okay. First of all, you had to cut all the square wood. Yeah. Yeah. Then you had to glue everything, and then you had to bandsaw all the circles, and then I turned each piece individually on my small lathe, and then I glued them. These are tongue and groove, basically. You know, they, they, there's a indentation in here, and then there's a plug. Set them in and glue. Yeah. Uh, and then I glued them up in the big lathe. Uh, using the lathe as a clamp. And when I got it all glued together, I didn't turn the lathe on, I just hand turned it to make sure everything was in line and worked in good, you know, so it was, it's all good it was in balance. You're screwed, huh? <laughs> it was all in balance. And then before the glue dried, I wiped off the excess, but before the glue dried, I, I painted it. So that when the glue was set up, the paint was done, and you know, I was, basically ready to put the antique finish on that piece. Uh, but it was a, oh man, the shop was. <laughs> <laughs> there you go.